Welcome to the Kapow Radio Show and to Why This Verse is Awesome with your host, Paul Kapow. Each episode presents specific Bible verses which are examined to unleash the reasons why those verses are so awesome. Join me in surveying and exploring the characteristics that make those verses so meaningful in our lives. Today we're going to look at Matthew 25, chapter 25. I'm not going to read the whole account to you. It's the parable of the talents of the servants. But I'm going to highlight specifically verse 23 and why that is so awesome. You see, verse 23 says, His Lord said unto him, Well done, good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. Well, this verse is awesome because this is the words we want to hear on our deathbed. These are the words we want to hear if we're alive when the Lord returns. Either case, these are the words we want to hear as we enter into eternity. So here's a story. In context, Jesus is telling several parables, and he ends with his return, his second coming in judgment. He began talking about the parables of the foolish virgins, virgins, and now he's talking about the parable of the talents. Now, a talent was not uh, what our Western mind says. Oh, he's talented. He's got skills, knowledge, and talent. You know, he can really d- tap dance. That's not what it is. Talent was a uh, a measure of silver weighing just, you know, probably under 100 pounds. It was, it was a lot of money. A talent was a lot of money in, in that day of silver. So in this story here, you have Jesus saying that the kingdom of heaven is like a a man, a, a lord, a master who traveled away to a far country. He just traveling abroad and he called his own servants to him. This is important. So it's not like he called other people to him or in our case, the world or non-believers. He called his own servants to him, his own people. And when he called his own people to him, he delivered unto them his goods. Now, this is is really important to understand what these ser- these servants were given were his goods, which were his talents, his money, his silver. The servants weren't being held accountable for their goods or what they brought to the table. They were being held accountable for the master's goods that they were in charge of. This parable is about stewardship. And when I mean stewardship, I mean taking care of another's goods in their behalf while they're gone. Okay. So this isn't about God needs your time, talent, and money. That's not about that. He doesn't need that stuff from you. He doesn't need what you bring to the table. All things belong to God. He doesn't need you bringing anything to the table. What he needs you to do is be faithful with what he gave you. All right. So let me, let me give an example here on stewardship that you may not think. Say you're a person and every time you meet somebody or around somebody, they say something like, um, you know what? You're so easy to talk to. Every time I'm around you, I just spill my guts and I just, I feel better. You know, thank you. Okay, now that's not something you learned in college. That's not something you picked up reading a book or psychology or anything. That is a gift, okay? It's a talent. It's a gift, not a talent as tap dancing, a talent like a silver. It's a stewardship. It's a gift given to you by God when you were born, right? So say you have that gift 
And then you decide because you got hurt in life and your boyfriend broke up with you or your husband left you or your wife cheated on you or your kids made fun of you, whatever the reason you got church hurt or whatever, whatever the reason, this is an example, just one example I'm thinking of, whatever the reason is, you no longer meet with people and listen to them and make them feel better using that gift that I hate using the word talent because we keep thinking of talents, but that, that stewardship that was given to you at birth by God. Okay. This is what makes us this scripture so awesome because we do not bring our time, our talents, and our money, and our skills, and our knowledge to the table to be used for God. We use what God gave us, okay? If you don't know what your gifting is from God, then I don't know what to tell you. We should all know what our giftings are for God. It could be many, many things. I mean, people, some people just have a beautiful voice, They've never taken a vocal lesson. Maybe they do take vocal lessons. Maybe they have a trained voice, but nonetheless, they have a beautiful voice that was gifted to them by our heavenly father. They have an anointing on that voice. You know what I'm saying? So maybe that person sang in choir and then they got their feelings hurt or their spouse made fun of them, you know, whatever happened. And so they quit using that gifting. They quit being a steward of the father's, the master's goods. Do you understand this? Do you get this? Get this in your head. They quit being a steward of their master's goods. The the kingdom of heaven is like this. It's like a man, he a master, who then left to a far country. Our Lord has left and gone and seated at the right hand of the Father. The Holy Spirit here is comforting us, but our Lord's going to come back in judgment as a lion. And he gathers his own servants and he delivers unto his own services, servants his goods. So we're stewards of what God the Father, what Christ has given us, okay? So you might have a person, you might be that person. Hey, he, this person is really good at breaking down Bible verses. This person's really good at teaching doctrine and teaching the truth of scripture. This person may or may not have a degree in seminary. They may have um, gone to college. They may not have, but God has given them a good ability. Now, there are stewards of that. So if they decide, well, I have this gift and I'm going to use it for my gain, And I'm going to make a lot of money and I'm going to get famous and I'm going to be a celebrity pastor of a church. They're not a good steward of the, of the gift that God gave them to steward. It's God's goods. It's always God's goods. This is what makes this scripture so awesome because it releases you from the thought process that you have to bring something to the table. You don't bring anything to the table. You can't bring anything to the table. You're, you're a worm. But God gives you those goods. God gives you that silver to then steward for him. Okay. So in this particular parable, he gives, he gives one steward five talents of silver. Okay. It's like 500 pounds of silver. One, he gives like 200 pounds of silver. One, he gives like a hundred pounds of silver. And he goes away and he says, okay, I'm giving each one to you according to your ability. Now, here it is, okay? He doesn't give 500 pounds of silver to the guy who may not have the ability to deal with that. He gives to that guy that amount of goods that he has ability to deal with. So the other thing that's awesome about this scripture is that the father's never gonna put on you something that you can't do. Okay, so if he's called you to a a place, if he's called you to a ministry, if if he's called you to steward a gift he's given you, you will have the ability to carry that out. All right. It's not a failure thing. So when you fail, it's all on you. It's, It's never on the master. 
Okay. So we, we read in this story that the, the person, the steward that was given five, you know, hundred pounds of silver from the master. That, so he's a steward of somebody else's money. He's a steward of somebody else's goods. He went and he traded with the same. And guess what he did? He doubled it. He, he, he doubled the, the profits. It was good. So when his master was going to come back, he goes, hey, not you gave me, you left me with 500 pounds of silver. I'm giving you a thousand pounds back because uh, I invested it. Got some good deals. That's a good deal, right? So what's the steward's job to do? The steward's job is to work for the master. The steward's job isn't to bring what he brings to the table. It's to use the master's goods for the master's benefit. It's all about God. It's all about our Messiah. It's never about us. We got to get that through our little stupid human heads. Okay. And then then also the servant that got 200 pounds of silver, he did the same thing and he doubled it. Now, here's the, here's the, here's the rub. The, the one guy who got the least amount, according to his ability, he, instead of investing it in being a good steward with the money, he, he, he dug a hole and he hid his master's goods. He just buried it because he was afraid. This is key. This, this is key. I want you to, to really understand why this servant did this because he was afraid. So when the master comes back, the master goes to take account of his goods. And he, he calls the servants in and the guy says, look, you gave me five hundred pounds of silver and I, uh, I invested it for you. And here you are. Here's a thousand. Wow. And uh, you know what the master said? Well done. Thy good. You're good. It means beneficial. You're a beneficial and you're a faithful. You're a believing. You're a believer. You're a true servant. And he says, thou hast been believing and faithful. You have been sure over a few things. So, you know, 500 pounds of silver to the master was just a few things. And he says, I'm going to make you ruler over many things because you could be trusted. And then he says this, enter right now, enter into the joy of thy Lord. Yeah. The gladness, the joyfulness. Yes. The delight. No, that's a word you want to hear. Now you're not going to hear those words. I'm sorry to tell you. I got to tell you right now on the Kapow radio show. What makes the scripture also? I got to tell you right now, you're never going to hear those words if you're scared to use the giftings that belong to God that he's entrusted you with to steward. I'm not being mean and I'm not being judgmental. I'm telling you what Jesus said. It's not going to happen. I don't care how religious you are, or how many um, prayers you've said, and I don't care how much you've confessed. You're going to have to use... You and you better if you're not doing it, you you better figure it out and use what God has given you for God's benefit. It's not what you bring to the table, it's what He's given you. Okay? It's the good He's given to you. It's a stewardship parable that is real life in the spiritual sense. Okay, it's really happening and it will happen. You don't want to be on the other end. So this, so the story goes on. The same thing happened with the guy who got the two talents. He doubled it. And the Lord said the same thing to him. Enter, you know, you've been faithful. Enter to the joy of the Lord. You get blah, blah, blah. And then in verse 24, unfortunately, okay, uh, we have the guy who only got one talent. And then he came to the Lord and he says, you know, I, I knew you were tough and I knew you did this and blah, 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 blah. Now in verse 25, he says, and I was afraid he was frightened. He was alarmed. He had fear. That's your enemy. Fear is your enemy. Fear is always your enemy. God is not the author of fear. So this steward of the master's good says, I was afraid. What, what do you think he was afraid of? You tell me what he was afraid of. He was afraid of failing. He was afraid of losing the master's goods. He was afraid of being entrusted 
in a stewardship sense of the master's goods and then losing that. Um, that's what he was afraid of. And then he was going to be in trouble. So rather than lose it, he took the low road and the safe road and he just hit it. So when he came back, <laughs> when he came back, he goes, here, master, here's what you gave me. Uh, here it is. He didn't double it. He didn't triple it. He didn't do nothing with it. He just hid it. Here's the reaction that God, our father and Jesus, our Messiah is going to have to those who do that. He answered and he says, you're a wicked. They didn't say, oh, OK, you made a mistake. You were scared. I understand. Some people are more scared. Some people are more child. You know, that's OK. That's OK. We have a little place in the corner for you in heaven. It wasn't like that. He called them a wicked. He called them slothful, which means which means grievous, slothful, backwards, tardy. He called him a slothful servant. You want to be called a sloth? Do you want to be called a slothful servant? And he says, you know where, where I, I reap. I didn't. I, you notice that I reap where I sowed not. And I gathered where I have not strawed. Yeah, I'm a powerful guy. You know, I, I double money. I, I invest. I I got work to do. And he goes, you should have put my money at least with the bankers. That when I come back, at least I have some interest. But but you just buried it in the earth. Now, now check it out. The master then takes that good that he bestowed to him to steward for him. And he takes it away from him and he gives it to the other ones who have more goods because they could be trusted and they're faithful. You understand? You know, it's like that saying, if you want something done, get, give it to the person who has the busiest desk. The, if you want something done, you got to find the busiest person in your office and give them more work. Okay. Because the lazy person is not going to get it done. Um, that lazy person should be fired. He shouldn't even be working there. It's not fair to the people who work. And the master feels the same way. He, he's not going to put up with it. He's not going to say, well, you don't work and you, you, you didn't do anything with the gift I gave you. Get, to, get out of here. You're, you're not coming into the joy of the Lord. I, 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 I'm not, I, I'm not no socialist. Everything's equal. It's not, a, it's not, it's not equality here. You, you either steward what you're given or you don't. There's no gray area. No. Verse 29 in the parable, it says, for unto everyone that has shall be given and he shall have abundance. Okay. Because he's a good faithful servant. You get it? He's a good steward. But from him that hath not, who, who, who hid it, it's going to be taken away. And it says, and, and, and they're going to cast you, the unprofitable servant. Unprofitable means um, useless it's, it's a useless service. If you don't use the goods that the master entrusted you with, once again, not your skills, abilities, talents, and knowledge, his giftings. If you don't use those to further his goals, then you will be unprofitable servant and you're cast, cast into outer darkness there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Yeah, that's that's hellfire. That's hellfire. Now you can you can argue with me all you want and go, oh, I'm saved, once saved, I'll never. Nah. Yeah, you, know, you don't have to believe me. Um, your blood's not on my hands. I'm what I'm telling you. I, what I'm telling you, you need to realize what your giftings are. What what have you been entrusted with as a servant for the master? And then you need to work towards that goal. Now, he, he's he, he's not mad at this guy because he didn't double it. He's the, the other two just happened to double it. But I think, you know, if, if they just got because he's just saying you should at least put it in the bank and I would have got interest. It's not the amount that the other servants did. It's that this guy did nothing. Right. Have you ever met these people that said, I'll never love again? You know, I was in love one time and I got my heart broken so much. I will never love again. Okay. Well, what if that was your gifting to love? What was, what if that was your gifting to have children? What was that your gifting to be a good parent? What was that? What if that was your gifting, but because you got hurt, you're never going to do it again. 
You said so you're you're burying a gift that was given to you. It's just I, I mean, there's there could just be millions of examples. You could think of your own. Just think of anything in in a personality in a person that definitely go. That's just a gift from God. That's just a gift from God. You know, um, the New Testament talks about different gifts from the Holy Spirit, administrations, and um, these different types of gifts that were bestowed they weren't they weren't the peoples they weren't the apostles gifts they were they were entrusted it's a stewardship lesson and we're all stewards down there we have a master and we're not the master we're the servant we're his servants we belong to him and so whatever he's entrusted you with whatever he's entrusted me with those things we we use for his benefit Right. Whether you think you're doing anything or not, if, if you have the gift of kindness, then be kind. If you have the gift of generosity, then be generous. If you have the gift of healing, then lay hands on people and pray for their healing. You get my point. Don't look at other people's gifts. Look at yours and realize they're not from you, but from your master, and you are to steward them. And really, that's what makes this <laughs> this uh, verse so awesome. And I'll read it to you again. Verse 23, his Lord said unto him, well done, good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. See, he's been faithful over a few things, the master's few things. He's going to make them ruler. What, over his stuff? No, over the master's stuff. Enter to your own joy? No, enter to the joy of your master. You understand? So that's what makes that scripture awesome. And we'll talk to you next week. And that concludes this episode of why this verse is awesome. If you have a favorite verse that you know is awesome for your life, please email me. Paul at kapowradioshow.com. Give me a description and I'll read it on the show. You may also email me a short audio file if you wish. Thank you. And until next time, God bless. Recently, spiritual attacks on innocent people have increased considerably. This is partly due to society's transformation into a satanic cult. Most people are clueless or hopeless in combating this spiritual mayhem. We wish to offer two good books to overcome these attacks. First, Demons in My Marriage Bed, a true story of spiritual warfare, offers one of the most effective training systems in combating spiritual darkness in order to gain personal freedom. Second, Eyes to See Unseen Enemies teaches how to see the hidden dangers which are all around us, even in places we would least expect them. Both books can be purchased on Amazon.com as a paperback or ebook. It is our desire that you will take advantage of these opportunities to increase your effectiveness in spiritual warfare and learn how to fight back instead of being a victim. We'll see you on the battlefield.